let's do this. Woo! Hey everybody, David, aka RV Jedi. Happy Halloween to you. Uh, we are going to do something unique tonight. Uh, I have some new equipment, a Dutch oven, and I'm going to try it out for the very first time and you're coming with me. We are going to do kind of a, an Irish beef stew. Uh, we've got some beef, some potatoes, some onions, some uh, uh, carrots. we got a little bit of everything to get into the pot. So the first thing that we have to do, set up the mise en place, and that means cutting everything, getting it right, and getting it ready to go into the Dutch oven. Let's start. Now I'm using a beef rump roast. You want to cut everything about the same size. This is actually the easiest part. Next in the pot, you want to get your potatoes, cutting them the same size. After the potatoes, I'm cutting up some green pepper, probably about a half of a green pepper. Then it's half of a white onion. Same thing, you want to cut all of the pieces the same size. Going to chop up a tomato. Uh, we are going to use uh, some diced tomato, but I also like to have some fresh tomato in my stew. And then the last vegetable I want to get in there are carrots. Love carrots in a beef stew. So for my birthday, I got this. It's a Dutch oven, cast iron. Very heavy, very sturdy. Uh, I then went out and got this and this. Uh, this is a lid lifter. So you got that here. And then to put the lid on, I have that. Um, I've got some welder's gloves because you need some gloves uh, because this could be hot. Uh, and then uh, for the base, I'm using a pizza pan to put all my coals on uh, and then to put this on uh, and contain everything. So this is my basic setup for how I'm going to use my Dutch oven, just part of what we're doing tonight. So the mise en place is pretty much done. Next, we have to take some flour, some garlic powder, some salt, some pepper, uh, mix that together, and then we're going to coat the meat with that uh, so it helps to create a little bit of a crust on the bottom of our Dutch oven. All right, the setup, the mise en place, everything is ready to go. It's now time for the new part, and that's dealing with the Dutch oven. Uh, again, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on this. I've read a lot about how to do this, but this is going to be my first time, and you're coming with me as we start this whole Dutch oven cooking process. The first thing we have to do, get the coals ready, uh, and then get them into a ring, and then put the Dutch oven on it so we can start warming up the bottom of the oven to get it ready for the first part of our stew. Okay, so now we have to get the coals uh, nice and hot. We'll put them on the pizza pan and then we'll put the Dutch oven on top of that. We'll start to get the bottom warmed up and that's when we'll add in the onions and the green peppers. Uh, and then we will add in the meat after that and then just kind of keep layering things over and over uh, until we get it the way we want it. The coals look like they're pretty much done. Time to get them onto the pizza pan and grab the Dutch oven, put that on top and start heating it up.
Okay, I think I did it right. Uh, we'll let those coals go for a little bit, uh, get some oil into the pan, and then get our onions in first. So the coals have been heating um, the Dutch oven. You can see some of the uh, heat coming off of there. Next in uh, is the olive oil. I'm just using a little bit of olive oil. Uh, want to coat the uh, bottom of the Dutch oven. Uh, and then I'm going to throw in my onions and green peppers, mix that up, and start to cook that all down to get it ready for the next layer to go into the Dutch oven. So the green peppers and onions have been cooking. Uh, you know, I put some coal on top of the Dutch oven as well. Uh, I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit and then throw in the meat. The meat uh, is gonna take a little while to cook, but I wanna make sure it's in there. We'll mix it all together uh, and start letting this layer cook on down before we start adding some more layers to this beef stew. This is a long cooking process without a doubt. Um, it's interesting, I checked on it once. Uh, the meat is in there right now and it's starting to, to get cooked a little bit. Uh, I am gonna add a couple more coals because I, I don't think it is hot enough, uh, but we'll see. Uh, next up though, we start putting in some of the veggies. We're gonna put the potato in, uh, we'll put the carrot in, um, and, and some of those things like that. Things that are gonna take a little while. And then we're gonna add in some of the liquid. We've got some soy sauce that we're gonna put in there. And then we've got an Irish, uh, I think it's an Irish stout. Um, I think, or a Scottish stout. Uh, but we got some beer that's gonna go in there too. <laughs> so next into the pot, we're gonna throw in our potatoes. Uh, then we're gonna take uh, some fresh cut tomatoes that I put in there. Uh, and then we're going to add in the carrots, get that all mixed up. And then we're going to put in our spice mixture, uh, which has some garlic powder, some salt pepper, some cayenne pepper, uh, some thyme, and uh, just kind of mix that all in there. Want to make sure everything is coated. And then uh, we will take the top, put it back on, and then uh, let that cook down for a little while. Time to get the wet ingredients in there as well. I've already added some minced garlic in there. Uh, I didn't use a lot of salt, so we're using some soy sauce as a little uh, flavoring here. Uh, we will also add in a half can of diced tomatoes. Uh, love that in a stew. And then we're gonna finish it off with some Stone Arch Scottish style ale. Uh, it's a handcrafted beer. You wanna put a, a beer in that you really like and a stout, something like that, a dark ale you want to use for a, a good stew. Mix it all up, put the top on, and then let it set. So everything is in the pot. The coals are on. There's not a lot left for me to do, but just sit and wait. Uh, I'm gonna let this go for about 40 minutes and then I'll check in on it. And then hopefully we'll have some good beef stew tonight. So this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, I, I let the coals get a little cool. 
Uh, so I'm uh, adding some more. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to balance everything, uh, but still gonna keep cooking away, waiting for the stew to finish up. Well, I share the good and the bad with you, and um, this may be a bad or a little bit of an issue. Uh, the Dutch oven didn't quite get as hot as I had hoped. Um, I still have to figure out how to cook with it. Um, I don't think the stew is complete. So I'm gonna pull it off. Um, all of the coals are done. I've added more coals. Uh, and I'm just gonna bring it back inside, finish it up on the stove, uh, and then uh, get some dinner in. And I'll learn from this. I'll use this as a learning example. Once inside, uh, I just take a, a big pan that I have, um, get some heat onto it, uh, and then I'm gonna take the stew, pour it into the pan, uh, and then just start cooking it down. Now I. It had done a lot of cooking uh, in the Dutch oven. Now it's basically just time to finish it off on the stove. And you can see here, uh, after just cooking it for a little while, the consistency will change. It'll get darker uh, once the top is on and it's cooked for a while. And then it'll all be ready to eat. The stew is finally ready. Let's plate this bad boy up and eat it. And there you have it, Dutch oven beef stew with a little assist from the stove. Uh, I've got some uh, Gladiator Merlot again, um, had it the other night, loved it, some bread for this. And tonight's movie, Blue Velvet. Oh, this is a strange one, but a fun one. Let's check this out. Mmm, fantastic. Now I still have to really figure out how to cook with the Dutch oven, but that'll come in time. In the meantime though, I'll put a link to how you make this. And like I always say, there's no need to eat poorly on the road. This is a perfect example of how you can do something really nice, warm and filling on a night like this. Oh, I just can't wait to get back to it. Hey, just a reminder, you can follow me all over social media at RVJedi. And then, of course, follow me on the blog at RVJedi.com. Get out there, chef it up, have fun, do whatever it is that makes you feel good when you're eating on the road. Like this. It makes me feel real good. We'll see you next time.